Now, just imagine this. There is disturbing evidence of racism in the countryside, according to, you guessed it, the BBC. Country File presenter John Craven claims while many white people insist there is no racial prejudice in rural Britain, academics say it can actually manifest in mundane ways like staring, silence, laughter or mutterings. It follows a controversial report in February by the Wildlife and Countryside Link, a group with 80 members which labelled the countryside a racist colonial white space. I mean... Really? Joining me now to discuss this is Rakeem Bissat, social commentator, good friend of the show. Rakeem, very good uh, uh, evening to you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Well, I mean, it comes as no surprise that the BBC uh, would keep continually sort of pushing this particular agenda. I mean, the countryside, um, as far as the BBC is concerned, is only somewhere you go when Glastonbury's on. I mean, most of them hang around, you know, the closest thing they've seen to the countryside uh, is Hyde Park, you know. Um, when you go to the countryside, it's a bit different. I know what, what it's like in the countryside, and you can walk into a country pub, no matter who you are, no matter what colour your skin is, and get people muttering and looking and going silent because they're not used to seeing people that they don't see every day. No, absolutely. And I think that these anti-countryside narratives, oh, we're talking about people now staring and laughing. Yeah. Oh, I think that it's quite remarkable. This is... Uh, Pseudo-intellectual nonsense, uh, in my view. Yeah. If we weren't to have a serious debate about racism in Britain, I'd focus less on the rural parts of the country because I think some of the biggest problems, if we want to talk about issues surrounding social cohesion, then th th that's an issue which is a serious issue in more urban parts of the country. Right. Uh, well, this is it, in, in, in more racially mixed parts of the country, actually. Indeed. Because, I mean, I was uh, reading, I mentioned this the other day, I was reading Matthew Said's piece in the Sunday Times, mm. not this one Sunday, but the Sunday before. He went to Rochdale, um, where she described as a place that was kind of unrecognisable, really, as part of Britain. You know, it had, uh, as he came off the station, within uh, his, 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 his kind of um, ability to look around, six mosques. There was a school opposite this railway station that had 450 children in it, only one of whom was white. And then sort of further down the road, they had a sort of white area where all the white people lived and where there was a school with about 400 white kids in it with hardly any uh, ethnic minority kids. And so if that's the state of affairs in Rochdale, it's no wonder there are racial tensions because it's not mixed at all. No, absolutely. And I think there's very serious issues surrounding um, very intense forms of social segregation along ethnic and religious lines across a, a string of post-industrial towns across northern England. And I think that those would be the kind of issues that I'd be really focusing on if people are very serious about community relations. I'd make this point as well, Mike, that I'm, I live in Luton, uh, in Bedfordshire. Some of the most successful ethnic minority businesses are not in Luton and Bedford in the county. In fact, they're in more rural areas. So I think that if there was such a strong degree of racial hostility in the countryside, would we see ethnic minority-owned businesses, ethnic minority entrepreneurs doing well in more rural parts of the county? I'm not so sure. No, exactly right. I mean, I saw David Lammy was talking about this the other day. He said that he goes to visit his in-laws in Sussex and feels like he's the only black guy there. Well, guess what? That's a bit what Sussex is like, because, you know, once you get outside of, as you say, the metropolitan areas of Great Britain, mm. Birmingham, Manchester, you know, Liverpool, London, you know, Bristol, Leeds, Glasgow, you don't see Indeed. very many people who are not white, you know. Large swathes of Britain are actually full of white people. It's still an 86% white country. Of and I think the thing is, if you live in London or Manchester, you might not think that. But, I mean, David Lammy should know better, really, shouldn't he? Well, I, I, I'd make the point that if you look at the demographic change in rural areas, over the course of the 21st century, the ethnic minority population in rural England has actually increased. So if there was such a, such a high level of racial hostility, I don't think you'd see more ethnic minority families moving from more urban parts of the country to more rural communities in England. So I think that the stats show that, in fact, more and more ethnic minorities are actually willing to move to rural areas. And I'd also make this point that people talk about, you know, people having difficulties in terms of accessing the countryside. Of course, we could talk about improving public transportation links between more urban parts of the country, linking them better with rural parts of the country. But the reality is, Mike, that more eth certain ethnic minority communities, it, it, the people in those communities, they may prefer, or rather they would prioritise their time, energy and resources towards visiting their countries of origin. You yeah. have certain ethnic minority people. They're more well-travelled in a global sense as opposed to being well-travelled in their own country. 
And ultimately, this just comes down to personal preferences. Well, exactly right. And, I mean, the other thing is, is that we should stop taking any of these groups, like this countryside link group with 80 members. You know, mm. I mean, so what? I mean, I've seen more people on a coach, you know, 80 members who think it's a white colonial space. Well, I don't give a, a damn what they think, to be honest, because they don't represent anybody. No, absolutely. I think many, many of these groups, in my view, that they're, they're wholly unrepresentative. Um, I, I think they have a divisive agenda. I think that many of these groups and organisations, they know full well that the, the English countryside is a, is, a, is a great source of national belonging for many people in the country, whether they live in the rural areas or they don't live in the rural areas. It's a very strong part of British heritage, our traditions, and, and I think that, in a sense, that what you're seeing here, and I think you have institutions such as the BBC, I think that as opposed to celebrating our country's heritage and traditions, because they feel that the very people who care about this are the kind of people who don't hold their own social and political values, this is precisely why I think you see this anti-countryside rhetoric very much coming into play in mainstream discourse. It brings you back to the whole Brexit debate, doesn't it? They don't like the fact that, you know, there might be people in the north of England... Um, who would be calling themselves probably working-class Tories who didn't want the idea mm. of open borders, who wanted to vote for Brexit. They don't really like that idea of those people being British in the same way they don't like people living in the shires, um, shooting grouse and, you know, catching rabbits mm. and cooking them in a pot and thinking that they must be horrible racists because they're all, you know, old military types. It's ludicrous. And, I mean, if I were BBC, I would concentrate more on turning country file back into a show actually about the country because I'm told they spend most of their time now talking about diversity and inclusion um, and biodiversity and, you know, rewilding farms and making sure that farmers can't actually grow anything, um, which brings them to demonstrate in London, as they did last night, um, because they're surrounded by idiots from Country Farm. No, absolutely. And I think, wouldn't it be nice to have a show that actually celebrate the countryside? Yeah. Which has inspired some of the most finest books and music that's ever been produced in England. Yeah. I think that what we need to... What we need, there needs to be a reconnection with our heritage and traditions as opposed to trashing them. And I'd expect a bit better from the national public broadcaster, but I think in recent times, it's really... <laughs> it's, it's, it's suffered quite a decline, really, uh, in that sense. But I don't think that the way the BBC treats these issues, especially when it comes to the people's national pride in the countryside, the, the, their operations, their activities, and indeed their programmes, I don't think they're necessarily representative of mainstream opinion. No, I think that's absolutely right. But I think we know, Rakeem, given what's happened mm. to the BBC, even just in the time that you and I have known each other, I mean, I can't believe the collapse of the organisation. It's literally gone from bad to worse, week to week. It's now, this is probably the mm. worst last 12 months it's ever had. No, absolutely. And I think that w when we look at recent social developments, including the rise of the Black Lives Matter movement, I think what we've seen, we've seen that import, um, importation of American racial identity politics. And I think that it's contaminated public sector institutions, including the BBC, but also the NHS and many of our state schools. And I think that it's a real shame because if you want to, if you want to champion a civic nationalism, a patriotism that can bring together a diversity of groups. That includes taking pride in your own country's heritage and traditions, and that should have the English countryside at the heart of it, actually. Yeah, absolutely right. Couldn't agree more. Rakeem, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Rakeem Hassan, uh, they're making very sensible points about these complete and utter bozos who go on and on about how this is racist, that's racist, the countryside is racist, you know, cheese is racist, cows are racist, you know, buses are racist. It's ridiculous. Totally and utter madness.